And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men come to call you, rise and go with them. But only the word which I speak to you, that you shall speak. So Balaam rose in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. So why is God doing this? He said, they're blessed, don't go there. But now he's kind of allowing him to go. Let's keep reading. Verse 22. God's anger was aroused because he went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. You know, God was angry, he says. So why was God angry? Was he kind of technically obeying God? Let's say he was, then why would God get angry? God's anger, his wrath, uh, is against whom? What kind of people? Like, against whom does God get angry, according to the Bible? In John chapter 3, God's wrath abides on these type of people. The wicked or the people who don't believe, who are not abiding in Jesus Christ. Okay? But if you actually, and that's at the, at the tail end of uh, John chapter 3. John chapter 3, it actually says that. But if you actually go back, you back up to John chapter 3, 16. It says what? For God so loved the believers? No, the world. The world is non-believers. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have an ever, uh, everlasting life. So God did something. God gave that something that was most precious to Him, His only begotten Son, to the world because He loved the world. But He says at the bottom that His wrath abides on the world, the non-believers, people who, are, who don't believe. So let's you know, combine the two. It, it actually, what it actually is saying is that in His wrath, in God's wrath, what did He do? He gave His only begotten Son. So wrath is not, in the Bible, God's anger and wrath is not what you think. Okay? The human beings in our wrath, in our anger, what, 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 what do we do? We try to hurt somebody. We try to kill somebody. That's what we do in our anger. That's not what God does in His anger. Okay? When God pours out His love and you don't accept it and you reject it, He gets frustrated and the Bible calls that His anger. But in His anger, what does He do? He desires to save you even more. He comes back. You resist His grace and He comes back with a greater grace. Now that we know that this guy didn't obey, what does God do with people who don't obey? And He's a prophet. You have to understand, the, the prophets are held to a higher standard. Balaam is a prophet. He's totally ignoring the heart of God and he's resisting obedience. Right? So what God would want to do with Balaam, what he desperately wants to do with Balaam, is to reveal the truth that he may repent and obey. God wants to give him another opportunity to obey. You wonder, you know, well, if God doesn't really want him to go, why does he keep telling him to go? Why does he keep giving him a chance to go? Because he really wants true obedience. He wants Balaam to wake up and say, God, I know you don't really want me to go. I don't want to go. If you don't want me to go, I don't want to go. Instead of him look, you know, trying to figure out a way to go there and make some money by cursing Israel. Search your hearts and see if you're truly obeying. If the answer is no, I'm not then don't try to drum up that obedience because you can't. Go to the cross. Go to the foot of the cross and spend some time there with the Lord. And He will give you the strength to obey, truly from the heart. And there really is, there, there really is no other way to obey.